Let's consider how vorticity evolves in a flow that has shear, that has internal gradients of the velocity u. We'll start by considering an ideal barotropic fluid. And for a fluid that's ideal and barotropic, then the vorticity, the time evolution of vorticity, is given by the curl of u cross omega. This is our, our vorticity evolution equation. If we expand that with vector identities and rearrange the terms, and we get that the Lagrangian change of vorticity, the change of vorticity co-moving with the fluid, it's given by two terms. Um, one is our compressibility term. When you squish things together, you change the vorticity. Um, and the other is stretching by shear. And it's the second term, this, this first term on the right-hand side that I wanna spend a little time illustrating right now. So let's, let's consider how shear stretching operates and how it generates and creates vorticity. So let's consider a velocity field U. The velocity field U I'm gonna draw is gonna be a very simple one. Um, we're gonna have the U vector is equal to some magnitude and some linear change times um, it pointing in the X hat direction. So this is just a linear, um, a linear shear flow. And drawing this with our coordinate system x going this way and y going this way, um, what this is, is this is a large flow at the top of the page here, and then a small flow as I come down. So here is my linear shear flow. And what I want to think about in this flow is I want to put a, a vortex line in this flow. I'm going to use some colors to help me visualize things. So um, what I want to know is um, what's uh, d by dt of the vorticity. Um, so d, full Lagrangian derivative, d by dt of the vorticity. And this is going to be equal to, um, we'll use pink for our vorticity here, pink for that. Um, let's consider um, our, uh, our gradient in red, and um, let's consider our velocity flow in U. And I want to show my new vorticity. I'll show that in, in green so we can make the components stick out a little bit. Let's think first about what happens, um, what happens pictorially. So if I put a line of vorticity in this flow, so here's my... Here's my vorticity. Um, what, what happens to this vorticity in this flow? Well, without knowing almost anything about, um, without, without going through the math, we can see that the flow is fast at the top and it's slow at the bottom. So I might expect that after some time, my new vorticity looks something like this. Um, it's gonna have moved further to the right at the top and less to the right at the bottom because the flow at the bottom is slow and the flow at the top is fast. Um, so let's let's actually let's color this vorticity um, in green so we can keep it keep it clear. So here's our here's our new vorticity vector in green, and this new vorticity vector um, it's it's got two components. It's got uh, we can we can break this up into uh, into a x and y component of our vorticity vector, which we'll draw now. This is um, one component here, and then one component here. So there's a, there's a y component, and there's an x component. And our, our, total, our total vector omega, right? Our, our new omega vector, this is omega y in the y hat direction plus omega x in the x hat direction. And our original vector was omega, and it was all in the y hat direction. Uh, omega y in the y hat direction. And as you can see from our picture, um, omega y has not changed in this flow. So um, omega y, original in pink, is um, equal to the later omega y in green, um, this is unchanged. But omega x originally, there was, there was none, 
And this is, uh, this is not equal to the new omega x, which was generated. So there's been a change in the vorticity, and all of that change is in the x direction. All right, so let's now, let's now consider our, our math. So we want to know what's, um, what's uh, d omega dt. And this is um, omega dot grad u. Well, what's grad u? Well, grad u, so here's, here's the grad bit. Grad u clearly goes that way um, because uh, u varies only in the y direction. So grad u, grad u, this is equal to d by dy of the u vector. Um, this all pointing in the y hat direction. It's got two vector directions, so it's effectively a two tensor. All right, so now let's let's put in our ingredients. So the only thing that contracts on grad u is um, omega in the y direction. So this is omega in the y direction times uh, d by dy of the u vector. And we've contracted on y hat, um, y hat contract, so uh, the um, we've contracted on y hat. So the only um, the only vector information is actually left in u here. So let's write this out now. So this is um, omega y times u naught and d by dy of the u profile. Well, that's just y, and so that's just one. And so this is omega y u naught in the x hat direction. So from our shear flow, the d omega d t, this is entirely, this is our initial vorticity times u naught in the x hat direction. So all of the vorticity generation in our shear flow is in the x hat direction. We can see that in our picture that we drew, um, all of the generated vorticity is this omega x downstream, whereas the cross-stream vorticity is unchanged. And we're going to find out that this is true in general for any, um, any vector q uh, with uh, the evolution equation partial, partial with respect to t of q is equal to del cross u vector Across the vector q. There's some very important properties of vectors that evolve according to these evolution equations, um, and these, these vectors themselves are very important um, in the natural world as vorticity follow, evolves following this equation, and so does the magnetic field in MHD.